She entered her coven's modest home. It wasn't themed like the Adams family or had a creepy Halloween aesthetic to it. No one in her coven were the type to revel in announcing to the world what they were. When you had real power, telling everyone you did felt a bit stupid in hindsight, and none of them were particularly what one would call goth. Outwardly, it was just an apartment in Ravenswood. She entered their haven and passed through the black beaded doorway. Where the fuck were you? Enya said. I was... I didn't need to see you fighting over something stupid. You're stupid now? Enya declared. No, no, for, forget about that. We have real problems. Wilhelmina sat up from the couch. Somehow, people know about us. About what I did, said Jenny. How much do they know? Wilhelmina asked tactically. Jenny shook her head with uncertainty. She quickly ran over to the circular kitchen table with the crystal ball on it. Jenny used that table to do her readings. She read for people as well and made a decent amount of money doing it. She went into a drawer and retrieved her grimoire and her good tarot cards, not the travel ones. She moved her hands and shuffled it as if possessed. What did it tell you? Inya asked. He said he was coming here within the hour. You told him where we live? Inya said with raising anger. I didn't tell him a damn thing he knew. We could kill him. Wilhelmina asked and suggested all at once. Don't know if killing this guy stops people from coming for us, Jenny said. She began to concentrate harder and blocked out her sister's voices until they melded into the background. Lights and colors coalesced when sight became a concept. Lights and colors swirled about creating for Jenny a new reality. Her eyes retreated to the back of her head and reflected a pupilless white. Black candles thrown around the room sparked to life as if the element of flame had been awoken. There was a sulfuric smell that oozed out of the air and rolled about the room. Loose papers and things of no weight lifted and was held aloft as if gravity wanted no part in whatever dark forces happened in this place. Jenny continued to deal the cards, oblivious to the incident. Inya and Wilhelmina showed concern, to say the least. Jenny, while a powerful medium, had never invoked power on this level. They had no other recourse but to let it play out and watch Jenny continue her trance. Jenny could not see so much as perceive, couldn't hear so much as know. She stood up and flipped over the cards. Each card she pulled was deaf, one after the other. She faced her sisters to confirm, and as she tossed a card down, it suspended in air. She felt the cold hand of death snake under her skirt and reveal her black lingerie. As she felt a hand pull at her lace straps, she took a cautious step back. Who's there? She demanded. It's me. It said in a deep male voice. Satan? Jenny said. The voice made a blowing raspberries noise. Death. What did you think? You, you know what? He said as if offended. Possibly disappointed, but not necessarily upset. Jenny's eyes began to perceive the darkness. What looked as harmless shadow became real. It was a hulking figure, strong and almost ape-like, the way the shadows curved around it. I've been watching you for some time. Thanks, I think. When you called me, when you danced for me, well, I listened. Okay, Jenny said, as if she was sort of waiting for the reason this eternal being had any interest in her. You look like you need a bit more help. Do you want my help? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I do. Are you offering to help me? Yes, that is what I'm offering. What is it you require in return? A simple thing. Jenny was waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for her soul to come into question, waiting for her to have to make the impossible choice of destroying something she loved. I want to date you. The fuck? Yeah, I'm serious. I want to date you. I'm a lesbian. That is seriously your takeaway from this? Death's form shifted in the shadows. Its curves became softer and more womanly. 
It revealed itself to be as feminine and beautiful as the most beautiful woman she had ever seen, of course, with a gothic undertone. Is this better? Def said as a sexy, husky-voiced female. The supernatural entity leaned in and touched Jenny around the hips. With Def's other hand, she produced a foreign, green-colored fruit. She bit into it and the juice dribbled down her lips. She shared it with Jenny, who only pushed back on the idea for the briefest moment. So, you will make this go away if I date you? Yes. How many dates? Three, Def said as if it were a negotiation. And I don't have to kill anything or give you my soul. No, but maybe in time we'll want to do that for each other. Def whispered the last part to herself. What? Don't mind me. I'm getting ahead of myself. If it doesn't work out, what happens? You undo everything and this comes back on me somehow? Nope. Three dates and that's a wrap. Jenny rubbed her face in thought, then smiled deathlessly. Fuck it. Seal it with a kiss? Def said. Jenny thought about it. Now that she knew they were in the courting process, she didn't want to be too easy. Sure. She pecked Def on the lips. Def shrugged as if confused with the weak display. If you want to date me, you're going to have to work for it now, said Jenny. Def nodded and smiled. Inya and Wilhelmina House looks of fear and concern, though Jenny didn't. She confidently strode to the door and opened it. I'm Winston Barbo, said a man in a brown long coat. Five steps behind him were two police officers. As Barbo reached to give a handshake, he grabbed his head and dropped dead. The two cops took a step to see what just happened. One man clutched his heart. The other one fell over with no warning. They dropped dead. Jenny's eyes widened with fear, and she briskly closed the door. I didn't think you'd do that, Jenny said to something Inya and Wilhelmina couldn't see. I'm deaf, and you didn't think I'd kill your problems. That's rather adorable, said a voice that came from behind the three witches. Deaf emerged from the shadow. Her body clung off robes draped in dark, her face the hints of dried skull. Oh, meet my new girlfriend, Jenny said to her sisters, whose mouths were agape. Deaf came for her. Enough of all this meta bullshit. So unless you gonna pull up a shovel and get to work, I need you to get the fuck out of my graveyard. I got bodies to put in holes, baby. Nah, 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 nah. I ain't leaving till somebody give me my own shit. I'm sick and tired of this. So why the fuck are you complaining to me? Well, I mean, if I don't complain to you, baby, who am I complaining to? The name of the channel is the Queen of Grave Diggers, not the... Arcade of Adirai. Oh shit, that's a dope ass name. Clip that shit, chat. So technically, you the leader of this shit. Or if you don't get your ass out of my graveyard, I'm gonna break you in two. Look here, lady. I am a god. You think you're gonna bust my ass with a shovel? You're a god, but you can die. I can't. So that at least makes me a little G god. Alright, alright. We ain't gotta do no magic slap fighting up in this fucker. So, um, let's cut a deal. Stand down, Manuel. We may have no need for you to throw punch this fucker. Si, senora. All right, what deal did you have in mind? All right, all right, all right, all right. You got Halloween on lock. Ain't nobody disputing that shit. All right, sweetheart. This was gotta happen. You gotta talk to the dude who be doing these stories and tell him to put my ass in more shit. I have no idea who you talking about, but, um, sure. Whatever. All right. Everybody heard you say that shit, so I guess we could. So, um, I guess I'm just gonna you know, step step out. You know, before I go, uh, D&D stories for life. Oh, at the Halloween. Probably some cyberpunk, too. Uh, yeah, alright. I'm out. Bamf, motherfucker! What a fucking weirdo. See, si, senora.